Hello everyone, I hope you are well. Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I want to start off this list by doing something a bit different and start by saying something nice. Now, I sincerely hope that you are treating yourself the best you possibly can. I know that there are hardships in life that are unavoidable sometimes, but remember this salient point. You are not alone and there are people out there who care about you, be they friends, family or support groups in our society. And if we all pull together, things will get a little bit easier. All right. Well, now we've spoken about giving each other a helping hand, let's take that hand and ball it into a fist and hit some unsuspecting puppies, because today we're going to be dicks again, or at least in a video game sense. Now, I covered this topic a while back, so I'm back with a fresh batch of crap. I mean, hot takes for you lovely, lovely people. And with this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 more hilarious ways that video games punished you for being a dick. Number 10, Tomb Raider 2, Slam Dunker Monk. Now, if we're being honest, Lara Croft is a bit of a tool. She parades around like butter wouldn't melt, and admittedly, she has saved the world a fair few times, but she's got a right hard on for things like shooting poor old defenseless wolves in the face, quite possibly killing the last known dinosaurs without a second thought, and probably causing her butler some severe frostbite by locking him in that fridge. And let's not forget that if you do decide to continue on this mean streak of hers, that you can actually get a right slapping in the form of an in-game beatdown from these monks that you can find in Tomb Raider 2. Now these guys are just happy just chilling and being all spiritual as is their want to do, but if you go waving your glock in their face, which might accidentally happen as they do tend to get in the way a lot, then all of the monks in this area will, instead of turning the other cheek, turn you inside out as they will swarm Lara from all angles. It's a fearsome reminder that you should not shoot monks, although if you needed this game to point that out then you've got some serious issues to work through. Number 9. Dynasty Warriors 6 Don't Mess With Peace If there's one thing that Dynasty Warriors, or Dynasty Warriors if you're going to be an ass about it, teaches you about the romance of the Three Kingdoms, besides that apparently Guan Yu was over 9 foot tall, seriously look it up, was he bollocks by the way, anyway, was that Lu Bei, the big man who led Shu to countless uh, retreats, absolutely loves the locals. Now in the game, he's portrayed as the most benevolent leader, willing to drop everything to save his followers. So if if you're playing as Wei at the Battle of Chang Ban and decide to murder them just to get his attention, well, he'll stop running and offer a polite warning. However, should you kill all of his mates, then uh-oh, you're in for a bit of trouble. As he will stop running, power up to unprecedented levels and then storm back to your head honcho and kill him quick sharp. If you ever needed a reason to not kill innocents, this is it. Number 8. Star Fox Adventures Flame On Okay, so if you've ever played this game, then you'll know it's barely a Star Fox game. If anything, it's a tangential game that sits in the same universe but has about as much to do with space combat as I do with hairstyles, and lest we not forget, I am bloody bold. It was a title not too well received by the fans who wanted much more than the janky platforming and combat that they got, and a lot of the eye was actually directed one particular way at Tricky the Dinosaur, and it's not hard to see why. No one likes babysitting, let alone a whiny dinosaur. I know. However, it does have a few useful tricks, such as the ability to breathe fire. Yeah, jury's out on whether that will be added to Jurassic Park as scientific research. Anyway, Tricky is very annoying, so it's not a stretch to think that some players took their frustrations out on it with their staff. But doing this too many times will result in Tricky's fuse snapping and it tries to light you on fire. It's a funny twist that punishes those who seek to abuse this small but hugely irritating sidekick. Number 7. Dishonored – Boatman Betrayal One of the best things about Dishonored is that you have quite a wide array of ways in which you can complete your missions. You can sneak through back alleys, distracting guards and slipping through shadows leaving naught but a whisper, or you can rush in guns blazing using your blades to turn enemies into blood fountains. However you choose to approach the situation though, there's a little meter keeping track of all of your actions. This chaos level rises with each murder you commit, and if you're so inclined as to slay over half of the in-game game population, well you're gonna get punished. On the final level, not only do things look about as nice as seeing a cat get dissected with shears, but your once seemingly staunch ally Samuel will actually turn against you. That's right, if you choose to slaughter everyone, he'll fire a warning shot in the air and alert all the guards in the area to your presence. Oh, and also by killing so many people, the game actually spawns more guards here than usual, so by being a dick, you've actually made things harder for yourself. Number 6. GTA 5 Stop Following Me 
GTA 5 was a milestone in game design. Not only did Rockstar provide a huge open world ripe with things to do, an engaging story which took us across land, sea and air, but also was incredibly adventurous in giving fans three playable protagonists that they could switch between on the fly. Now there's a lot of fun simply to be had in switching to see what humorous activities of theirs that we're actually interrupting. But have you ever wondered what happens if you follow another one of these protagonists while playing as another? Well the game doesn't because the whole point point is that these men are meant to be forging different paths, so if you try and harass, say, Trevor or Michael while you're playing as Franklin, after a while they'll give you a warning. Ignore that, and this happens. You get laid out in one punch and sent back to the emergency room. Jesus, I mean, I only wanted to ask them if they could go bowling, cousin. And yes, I do know that's from GTA 4, don't point that out. Number 5. Zelda A Link Between Worlds – Hinox Extortion Now, a lot of you on the previous video complained that I didn't involve Link getting assaulted by chickens that he'd been a kick in in A Link to the Past, so I'll address this right now by talking about a different Legend of Zelda game and a different time when you can be a dick. I know, I am a man of the people, right? So in A Link Between Worlds, as you're exploring, you might come across this cowering fellow with bad hair. No, it's not Josh Brown who works here, but an equally pathetic creature called a Henox or Hinox if you want to be weird about the pronunciation. All it wants to do is chill out in its cool ass cave and not be harassed by any tunic wearing adventurer types. In fact, he'll give you a five rupee piece just to get you to leave. However, if you're being a ru penis, you can carry on extorting this poor fellow to get even more money. Yet if you try to do this too many times, then something quite extraordinary happens. The big lad powers up, becomes invincible and demands that you give him his money back. You can't kill him and if you're not careful enough, he'll clobber your profiteering ass, and he won't even reset if you leave the cave and re-enter. Number 4. Shadow Warrior Big Bunny the rebooted Shadow Warrior games are incredibly visceral fun, harking back to a day when fast action oriented combat dominated PCs and wasn't afraid to get silly when the mood struck. And striking the mood, or to be more specific, killing it in both Shadow Warrior games could result in something nasty happening to the player. In the first game, you can find bunnies just hopping about and minding their own business, and if you kill them there's no punishment as hell, I mean there's so many of them around who's gonna miss a few, right? Well if you decide to interrupt them as they're in the act of lovemaking, then it will spawn this. The Bunny Lord, a jet black rabbit with super damaging attacks, the ability to teleport, and even its own mentally cool theme song. If you've not learned your lesson by the second game, then you can actually encounter a larger and much uglier Bunny Lord that will chew on your wang in a manner not seen outside of your mum honking on my boby. It's hilarious, terrifying, and also my wumper list. Number 3. Spelunky Shrine Smasher Spelunky is a charming title which sees you exploring ancient tombs, caverns, and other areas so dusty that they would give an asthmatic a panic attack. However, in your explorations, you're likely to come across these shrines to the god Kali, and upon these altars you can choose to sacrifice creatures and enemies in order to win her favour. Doing so nets you some ace loot if you decide to keep feeding her with blood, but should you decide to be a dick to this, admittedly dickish deity, then you'll end up incurring her wrath. Things start off pretty bad, with her spawning eight spiders if you destroy one of her altars, but things get worse if you destroy one more, with a ball and chain being attached to your legs, which limits your movement. Yet, should you decide to carry on and destroy four or more altars, she'll summon the Ghost, an invulnerable, ever-persistent foe who will kill you in one hit if it touches you. Now, some players have figured out ways of giving this spirit the sack, but it's a lot of work when you could just, I don't know, not piss about with somebody else's ritual realistic relics? Number 2. Might and Magic 7 – Loads of Gobbos Now, as an avid Warhammer fan, I love me some green skins, and my army of Gobbos is actually one of my most prized possessions, therefore I'd never be able to bring myself to trigger this next punishment in Might and Magic 7. If you so happen to find yourself in a goblin fort, then after wiping out the few guards there, you might be tempted to steal their treasure. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that Gobbos have it hard enough, so quite rightly, the game makes you aware it's probably best to leave some treasure by spawning so many of them that you might become totally overwhelmed. It's actually a slight running theme of the franchise, because apparently in Might and Magic 2 you can find a village of goblins just minding their own business, and if you kill them, the game will spawn enough that it might end up crashing the title. Brilliant. 
And number one, Mega Man Legends 2 rolling up the prices. The Mega Man Legends games are severely underrated titles in my opinion, and they all include little reasons that remind you to not be a tool. Now, true, in the first game you could get yourself a cool dark black armor if you decide to be a dick as it actually darkens the more you do dastardly deeds, but in the second game, well, the devs decided to clamp down on these curs. And it's your clamp or grabber that can actually get you into some trouble with Roll, as when she accompanies you in the Kalinka Tundra, you can try and, uh, well, copper feel with your robo arm. It's not a good look for you or Mega Man, and Roll will slap you as a result, quite rightly too if we're being honest. Stop it, Mega Man! Stop it, Mega Man! But the point is, is that if you keep being a pest and ignore her slaps that can actually kill you, then you might get that smile wiped off your face when you see that she's jacked up her prices by about 20%, making it harder to purchase items and upgrades. So the next time you try to be a perv, you should probably learn to roll with the punches that you'll probably end up getting. Oh, and also, just let her take her bath in peace. She won't talk to Mega Man after this. Bit awkward. And there we go, those were 10 more ways that video games punished you for being a dick. Go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And as always, I love you, you absolutely adorable people. I meant what I said at the beginning. Treat yourself well, please, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.